Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The FIFA 23 market is headed to the moon. Prices are going up like crazy and there's a reason why. I wanna talk about that and kind of break that down for you in today's video. And also, we are less than two days away from the FIFA point supply of everybody getting the ultimate edition pre-order access to the game and opening up their 4,600 FIFA points, which is a really, really big day for the market. And I think the stuff that we saw happen on the market yesterday might give us some insight on how the market could be reacting in just a few short days. So I want to take a look at that, take a look at what could happen today on Sunday on this game with content and with the market. And of course, look ahead at a couple of leaks that we have had and pack code that we have not talked about yet on the channel. So if you're excited for the upload today, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's talk market because there is a lot going on and prices have absolutely soared especially on your top tier meta players like this Vinny Jr. So if you did not know what happened yesterday and why all these prices are going crazy, a lot of people got on the game yesterday via the EA Creator Network, EA Game Changers. Basically, EA handpicked and selected some uh, creators, content creators around the world and said, hey, you get early access to the game, create some content. Basically, they gave them a code for the game to get on early. Now, I did not get a code for this game, but it's not the end of the world because if you think about it, I'm only missing out on what? Two days of early access and two days is going to go by like this. The market's not going to change that much. And is it really that big of an advantage? If you're spending FIFA points, yes. But for us, a lot of like me not going to spend FIFA points, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm not too bummed about it. Um, of course, it would be cool, but that is the reason why the market is going up. I mean, I really think that there were a ton of creators that got on the game yesterday. Based off the market fluctuations that I'm seeing, the stigma that the market is still very, very cheap is absolutely alive and well in everybody's minds because that is the reason why a lot of these prices went up yesterday is I think people went on the game, they opened up FIFA point packs and they know that prices are pretty cheap. So they went out and they built squads and there was this massive two hour time frame after that like kind of embargo was lifted in the time frame where those creators could get onto the game for the first time. You just saw like a huge, it was almost like a panic buying spree where so many of those creators and people that are just getting maybe some early disc copies uh, were headed out to the market and just buying so many cards and making these prices push up like crazy, especially in the super meta areas of the higher tier cards. Again, the cards that we know are good investments, but it's just kind of wild to see these prices moving up as much as they did and in such a, a short time span as they did. So that's kind of what happened, right? Again, people got on the market. I mean, also people are in, in different countries around the world, maybe have access to physical disc copies. So that is moving um, some people to get on the game as well before, you know, all of us that are going to get on in the regular time frame. So that's kind of what's going on with the market, right? People got on the game. They opened FIFA points. I mean, I've seen multiple FIFA streamers uh, that have had thousands of FIFA points and just been sitting there and opening packs, pack after pack after pack. It's getting them a lot of coins. They're going out on the market, buying players and building a team. And of course, again, as I said, that whole stigma is there that a lot of the market is still pretty cheap and that there's coins to be made. So that's why these prices went up so much much is because people were running to the market to buy players once they got coins, knowing that they wanted to build a team and potentially would have the opportunity to profit off of that in the coming days. So that's the situation that is happening right now. And like I said, there must have been a lot of people getting on yesterday. I saw a lot of people tweet out they were getting on the game. There's a lot of streamers that were on. I mean, it just shows with the prices that went up too. Now, here's the thing I want to talk about as we look through a few of these prices. It wasn't just the top tier that went up in price. We have a new card that is extinct, aka Tonali. I actually had one of these that I bought yesterday on stream at like 7,800 coins or 7,600 coins. I, I sold them for, I, I sold them right before he went extinct at 9.7K. I, I kind of forgot that his price range was 10K. And, you know, it's the lower tier cards that are going up a lot in price right now too. And that worries me a little bit. Yes, I do think that it's fine that Messi is a 230K. He's still gonna go higher. Yes, Mbappe is still gonna go higher. Ronaldo, he's still minimum price. It's kind of laughable. He is gonna go higher. He will be more than 160K for sure. Vinny, again, had one of the biggest rises yesterday. He is still gonna go higher in my opinion. But some of the cards that went up yesterday I'm a little bit worried about because these are the types of cards that we don't believe will maintain their prices for long, yet 
a lot of people are still building starter teams with them. Take a look at Frim Pong from under 6,000 coins, peaking at 7.5K. Now he's down to about 7,000 coins. Again, it's these lower rated cards that people are using if they didn't spend that many FIFA points, but they're still wanting to go out and buy a team. These are the cards that are going up the most, those starter team players, right? Which we've been telling you guys to be careful with. And some of these guys, man, like take a look at Alan St. Maximin from 19K all the way to 26. And now he's back down to about 23, but look at that spike. Same thing with um, with Renato Sanchez. He had such a big spike yesterday. 25,000 coins for a PSG Renato Sanchez. We are nearing what I thought was going to be kind of like, you know, not their highest point where they would get to. I still think that Renato, I still think that Alan St. Maximin will go higher in the next coming days. But we're getting up there on some of these lower rated cards that are going to get supplied a lot on Tuesday as well. And that's the next thing that I wanna talk about is what can we learn from this? What can we learn from what this snapshot of yesterday with a lot of people getting on the game for the first time and spending a lot of FIFA points, what this kind of shows us is what's gonna happen on Tuesday when you know the number of people that get on the game is like you know a hundred, a thousand, like there's going to be millions of people probably that get on the game on Tuesday with the 4,600 FIFA points and start ripping those packs. And it's going to be basically what we saw yesterday, just accelerated like way faster and with way, way, way more people. So that's what I'm interested to see how it's going to work out. Of course, it's all a big mystery until we get there. But I think what we saw yesterday will give us a little bit of insight on that because people are still going to think on Tuesday when we are opening our FIFA points, I think the common um, ideology again is going to be that a lot of prices on the market are, are pretty cheap and people are going to try to go out and build some teams right away and buy some players. But again, what's going to happen in that time too, is there's going to be way more supply than we saw yesterday. Think about it. If you multiply by again, like I said, like a thousand, the number of people that were on the game yesterday to what's going to happen on Tuesday. Think about all the more frim pongs that are going to be packed or the Joe Gomez or the Mateus Nunez, even the Alan St. Maximin type cards. I mean, look at one of your favorite starter squad players that I saw all over the internet last week when people were building starter squads, Jurian Timber. He barely moved. He went from 2.5K to 2.8, and right now he's 2.6. So, you know, a starter player like this, this is why we were trying to tell you guys, like, don't hold on to these for long. Maybe if it's a meta player like the St. Max, like the Renato, you can hold those for a little bit if you want to, but it's not a bad idea to even sell those now as their prices continue to rise especially if it is on the lower tier. A guy like Klosterman, I'd be very careful with. Adama, I'd be very careful with. Even Diaby being 84 rated, that's a card I probably wouldn't hold on to for long. Lacroix, you know, the, the same guys that we've been saying to, okay, be, be careful with, really, really start to be careful with these guys now because we are getting to that point where the supply and the demand tipping point, we're getting towards that peak, right? We are getting towards that peak. So that's what I would say, again, for the most meta cards, and, and we take a look back at last year's graphs as well to give us an idea of what could happen. I feel like what we saw today or yesterday on the market was almost like this same fluctuation that we had last year. And this is what we're all expecting to happen this year too, right? For a lot of these cards that are low rated, that are, that are even high rated, very meta and very popular, people are gonna build teams, they're going to go out and buy these cards up and the prices are going to rise. Yes, there's going to be a lot of team building and a lot of demand for people to buy cards because those FIFA points on Tuesday are going to be the main source of coins for so many people that have not been able to make many coins on the web app, right? Because the web app has been a grind. Let's all be honest. It's been tough out here to make coins on the web app. People are really looking forward to Tuesday and the 4,600 FIFA points. So there's going to be a lot of demand for buying teams and building teams then too. Um, but again, all I want to put out there and say is I, I just want you to be a little careful with these lower rated cards once again. And I also want you to be careful on some of the higher tier cards. As I'm looking through a few of these prices in here, even on like the higher tier, some of these guys are getting to places where I think I predicted Vinny's price to be around like what? I, I think I said about three to 350 for his card. Um, of course, he started off being 100,000 coins and he was even like 60 or 70K day one. I do think that he has plenty of room to rise. I think Messi, I think Mbappe, you know, a lot of these guys have room to continue to rise. You know, Usman Dembele had a really big jump yesterday. He's 54,000 coins. Erling Holland had a big jump. He's 56K. Or, uh, Militao, 78,000 coins. Tomori's 50K. So some of these guys, as they just continue to creep up in price, you have to kind of think in your head like, all right, 
how high in price is too high in price. And especially if you're looking to build a team that's maybe a bit of an investment team as well, start to think like, all right, what cards on this market right now are still undervalued, maybe based on a last year price, based on of how you know, meta OP popular they are, especially with the new chemistry system. You have to think about that sort of thing as well. Like I still think there's cards that are meta that are undervalued, but I also think there's cards on here that are getting close to where their max price might be. That's a really interesting thing to think about on this market. So again, it just give us, gives us some insight on how the market could play out on Tuesday because there's gonna be a lot of supply and a lot of people opening packs. So your lower tier cards are gonna get supplied, but the ones that are gonna be very popular and have demand could still go up like a St. Maxman, like a Renato Sanchez, and then those cards that are going to fall by the wayside pretty fast, like a Mateus Nunez, like a Jurian Timber, these are going to be the guys that continue to drop. Again, even a guy like Lacroix, right? Take a look at Lacroix's graph. I remember looking at this just a couple minutes ago. So Lacroix went down with pack supply. He went from 8K to 7K. And then he kind of went back up as people started putting him in their teams and, and buying him. And again, there's demand there for that player. But the fact that his price didn't go higher than where it was to start the day and like everybody else's price was way higher and prices went up a lot. A card like that, seeing that he, you know, went back up a little bit, but knowing also how much he probably was packed, that scares me a bit for a card 77 rated like Lacroix. So that's the kind of things that I'm thinking about right now on this market. Also, if you're somebody that has coins and, and you know, you're looking on the market for maybe for where you should, uh, should splash your cash or especially as we get closer to Tuesday, cards that I think are still very undervalued are some of these heroes, man. I really think that some of these hero cards, let me just sort uh, by rarity here, foot heroes, bang. I think that some of these guys are still really undervalued. Brolin, I mean, some of these guys don't have really good skill move or weak foot, three-star weak foot, four-star skills, but Syria links a brand new hero card. He is 85K, that might be his minimum price. Park Ji Sung, you know, um, especially the new heroes, the guys that are new to the game this year, Ricardo Carvalho, Rafa Marquez, Jean Pierre Papin, Dirk Kite. I know he's three star, three star, but I think there's still a lot of hype for these guys. And, and they're really cheap. Diego Forlan is starting to go up in price a good bit. I mean, this guy was like 110K yesterday, now he's 199. Um, you know, where's cool? I think this cool card, uh, you know, his price is a bit scuffed as well. 140K there. I don't know what his minimum is. But that's a card that I think is going to be very popular at the beginning. Again, you guys remember Park Ji Sung was like 80K. Now he's 120. He's absolutely going to keep going higher. Like these hero cards, I still think have a lot of room to rise. Um, and not all of them, but especially your most meta ones. So if you have coins right now and you're looking around the market, even a guy like Voler, Voler was like 150K and he's pretty rare right now, but 270. So if you're looking to splash your cash anywhere on the market, I think that a lot of these heroes and icons have plenty of potential to, to keep rising. And I feel like they're overlooked a little bit. I mean, um, especially since they're really, really rare, you don't have to worry about the supply on cards like these near as much as you do for a gold card. So I like those a lot. I also think the team of the week is an interesting play. Uh, you know, Hyunmin's son, 285. His price is going up a lot. KDB, 202K. This is where you would expect like a gold KDB card. Like I'm pretty sure gold KDB last year was around 180 to 195,000 coins. So the fact that this in form is there at 200,000 to me, even though I remember seeing this guy at 90K during the web app and he's up like, you know, 40, 50K from yesterday. I still think that under 200K for this Kevin De Bruyne card um, is, is a really, really good value. So if you're thinking about, hey, when I get my 4,600 FIFA points, what kind of card should I be looking to invest in the most or looking to place my coin balance into whether it's for an investment or kind of a team build and an investment watch the cards that are rare that's the best advice i can always give you is in forms right now they're going to be rare and the hero cards those are going to be some of the most rare items um, especially since there's not a lot of special cards on the game people are going to gravitate towards those really really fast so that's a lot of market talk i know that it is and i think in what we're going to do in tomorrow's video is we'll see what happens today on the market on sunday but then we'll start to break it down and kind of talk about okay depending on what players you might want to buy for your team we'll look at some possible buy times and scenarios before the fifa points drop um on you know late monday into tuesday on you know what the time frame might be for when you want to buy some of those players um, just because i don't want to try to tell you guys to buy cards at a certain time when we're you know a few days out still since we don't know what kind of content ea could drop today on sunday so we'll probably look that a bit more tomorrow but i would just say be on standby and that's why we've been saying don't even build a team during 
the, the web app stages. It's really not worth it unless you've opened a couple of tradable packs and you're piecing it together that way. But buying players like this for your team, really not going to be worth it because, you know, you wait another four or five days once you get on the game. The card like this is probably going to be like 3k and you're going to be glad that you saved yourself 4,000 coins and not bought it and not buying them at 7,000. So that's kind of my thought process. Now, like I mentioned, let's talk today on Sunday and let's move forward a bit from the market just for a quick second. Today, uh, hopefully we have live content. I mean, we had marquee matchups Thursday. We had the early access challenge number one on Friday. Yesterday, we had nothing, but it was almost like the content yesterday was the market moving and everybody else getting on the game and being able to watch content creators and streamers play the actual game and, and see the footage and watch pack openings and stuff like that. That is cool. And that's almost content in itself. I'm, I'm wondering if EA just said, hey, we're not going to put anything out because we know people be interested in this. But... I still imagine that we're going to get an early access challenge number two. I think a perfect day for that would be today. We'll just have to see what that SBC looks like. It would most likely bring, bring tradable supply to the market once again. So just like we saw for this SBC, if there is any specific requirements, go ahead, look on the market. I think bronze cards moved when this SBC came out. Um, watch the solutions potentially for that sort of thing. But I wouldn't expect a lot of content on Sunday. That would be one of the only things that I could see happening. And that would be some that would be some tradable supply for the market as well that could make some of your higher tier cards, like we saw on Friday, go up a bit more. I still think Messi is undervalued. 230K, I think that's a little bit too low. I think that Ronaldo at 160K is still pretty crazy. He's definitely going to go up as casuals get on the game and as casuals open FIFA points. Um, and want to go buy a card and, and use a card like him. So, you know, Kula Bali, I think, is still too cheap. If, I, if we just do a little rapid fire here, I think Llorente is a little undervalued still. De Young, undervalued. Conte should end up being 150K plus. He's undervalued. Teo Hernandez is undervalued still. Um, Kimpembe, yeah, he's still undervalued as well just because he's Kimpembe. And Marquinhos, man, I really think, where's Marquinhos at? I think Marquinhos is very undervalued at the moment. 44,000 coins. He, his price barely went up yesterday at all. He, he went up 4,000 coins. He went to 47. Now he's back down to 44. Not telling you to buy this card right now. Again, wait for maybe some supply today. And you know, right now in the nighttime, besides the crazy buying hour or two that we had yesterday with all those creators getting on the game, now we're seeing prices dip back down a bit. And just like we saw in the previous days, you see prices dip usually in the morning again. So after you watch this video, after the couple, hour, couple hours after this goes live, again, Check and see if prices are, are dipping down once again on some of the high tier meta cards because just the nighttime brings those peaks of those rare times on the market. And then maybe you'll have an opportunity to snag one or two of these guys today. But I still think there's plenty of plays if you're somebody who has coins. If you're on the game, one of those creators maybe checking this video out as well. Plenty of opportunities to make some coins across the market still players that are going to go a lot higher but also we're getting up and up right we're just we're edging closer and closer and closer to that time frame where it might time frame where it might be an inflection point for some of those low tier cards that just keep rising in price that people put in their teams so that's kind of what's going on there let's cover a couple things related to leaks we do have another leak it is Lewandowski he is going to be as foot sheriff has leaked listed to come in the ones to watch team number one and that's not an SBC that is not an objective this will be a card that will be in packs so now instead of having just four ones to watch is leaked for in packs we have five so we've got of course the Holland the Richarlison Sterling and I forget the last one Nunez and now we have Lewandowski as well again only one team of ones to watch this year EA confirmed that on the pitch notes so hopefully it's a really big team with a lot of players but this one's dope I think we assumed Lewandowski would get an OTW um, of course Poland at the World Cup as well so he's got that plus one potential if they win a game at the World Cup in any uh, you know, any circumstance if they win a game he gets a plus one upgrade there and of course winning three out of eight you get the wins to watch upgrade and any informs that he could potentially snag as well. So that's a W leak, could be a pretty cool card. Um, and I think his gold card maybe could benefit a little bit from this. You know, people like to invest in the gold card because they know that it will go out of packs. He is 91 rated, he's only 28,000 coins. Uh, and he's got the Barcelona links. There's a lot of really great Barcelona attackers. He went from 25K to 28. That's a card that 100% is undervalued still, in my opinion, as well. I know he's kind of, in a FIFA meta sense, still hiding under the shadow of, uh, like, Benzema, because Benzema's card definitely looks better than his. But, man, 27K for Lewandowski. What are his alternate positions? Center forward? Okay, nothing else. I mean, that's a card that's going to be really, really rare as well, just because he's 
literally one of the highest rated cards in the game. I like that card as investment. If he drops this morning, might just have to snag one. We will see. But that helps his investment potential as knowing he's going to be going out of packs this coming Friday, just a few days from now as a once to watch card. Now, also, last thing I want to talk about really briefly in this video is some packs that were modified. And these are FIFA 23 packs. So ignore the right column and focus on the left column. The right column that literally does not matter. Look at these packs. They're pretty fire. A FIFA 23 starter kit bundle pack. A starter pack, by the way. Look what this contains. 15 gold rare players. Three of them guaranteed to be 83 or higher. A draft token. Seven gold rare consumables, aka a lot of position modifiers. An 86 plus loan, a loan hero, and a loan base icon for seven games. That is a fire pack. Now that to me screams an Amazon Prime pack, not just because the old one right beside it's listed there, but that to me really does seem like an Amazon Prime pack. I don't know when that would be released. Maybe that's like a late September type time frame. I don't know when that would be out, but if that's out in the next like couple weeks, seriously, that pack is going to be mental. It's That's basically like, I don't know. It's not like an 85 times 15 or anything like that. It's no, not that high of a rating guarantee, but this early in the game, that's pretty mental. So we'll have to watch out for that for sure. I know it's untradeable, of course. Uh, actually, you know what? It does not say untradeable, but I would assume that it would be. That would be a market killer if it was tradable. So 100% guessing that's untradeable. Uh, untradeable jumbo premium gold pack. I would imagine this is a 15K pack, I believe. That would be a pack that would drop on the game on Once to Watch Friday. They'll drop some promo packs. An untradeable premium gold pack as well. Something along those lines, probably dropping on a Friday. An 80 plus Team of the Week player pack from Team of the Weeks 1 through 3. Uh, that means that this will be dropping most likely in the next two weeks because Team of the Week 2 is this Wednesday. So you would assume that this, this is going to drop after Team of the Week 3 or during Team of the Week 3 when it's out. So just keep an eye on your Team of the Week players. Um, you know, still, I think investing in Team of the Week players in the first couple months at a discard value is a very, very good investment. You guys know from last year, EA is going to bring a lot of content with SBCs this year. That's an investment we'll 100% be looking forward to. But uh, that's interesting to see that pack already added to the code. We have a 78 plus gold rare player pack and 83 plus pack. Those will probably be dropped during ones to watch. This one unlimited repeatable. And then this one like maybe one time or, uh, a day or one time every couple of days just for an upgrade pack. And then they've already started to add in some league specific three player packs. So it was just very interesting to see a couple of these packs added. Don't know when they're going to drop. I wouldn't expect them soon, except for the 78 plus. I believe last year during ones to watch, we had a 78 plus pack uh, dropped on the market that during that time period as well. So that was a lot of market theory to talk to today, but we had to do it because again, the 4,600 FIFA points are coming very soon. It's going to be one of the biggest days on the market this coming Tuesday. And I wanted to kind of look at what happened yesterday on the market and talk you guys through that because I think it's going to be key to understanding how things are going to go down on Tuesday on this game so if you enjoyed the video today smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and of course subscribe if you're new it's been nate the foot accountant i'll catch you guys later peace out